Symbols failing to load for you? Let me show you a way to force WinDebug. When a symbol is loaded from a PDB file, WinDebug will actually check if the symbol matches the executable. There are a few kinds of checks that WinDebug does, and whenever a check fails, WinDebug will actually reject the symbol and the symbol will not load. Okay, let me show you an example of the problem in WinDebug. So WinDebug is running and what I've done is I've actually loaded a memory dump in which I've intentionally created this problem so that I can show it to you in WinDebug. Okay, let me switch to thread 0 and then I'm just going to dump the stack. Now you can see that it's going to load a, a it's going to try to load the symbol for missing symbol 1.exe. That's the exe that I used to create this memory dump. And it's going to fail. Stack unwind information not available. The following frames may be wrong. Now let's try that again, but this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to do I'm going to just run sim noisy. What sim noisy does turns on an option in WinDebug so that whenever a symbol is loaded, it shows diagnostic information. Load the symbol again, we reload, and then run K again, and observe that this time, uh, it's going to actually fail to load the symbol, just like it did earlier, but it's going to show why. And what it does is, it goes in and it finds that the symbol, the path is not found uh, in all these locations, Notice that it is trying a specific path and then when it comes to the actual location where the symbol is loaded, it says mismatch PDB. That's an important clue on what's happening. Okay, so what's wrong is that when I compiled this program, I deleted the PDB file and then I compiled it again after taking the memory dump. So what happens in Visual Studio is that when I compiled the exe, Visual Studio actually writes a GUID into the EXE and it matches it to the PDB. The PDB has a GUID, the EXE is a GUID. When the GUID matches, that is when WinDebug knows that this symbol is the correct symbol. That is why it tries looking for the symbol with an exact path. This is actually the GUID in the EXE. I intentionally broke it by compiling the program twice. So on the second compile, the GUID is different, thus it says mismatch PDB. It finds the PDB file on disk, but it's mismatched. Okay, so what can we do about this situation? So, the checking mechanism in WinDebug can actually be toggled. And how you do that is to run sim simopt. Simopt shows all the options which are available that WinDebug will use when it is loading symbols. So it will check that the file name is case insensitive, so it doesn't care about the file name case. It checks things like um, whether it if it will stop if there's critical errors. Uh, it will use public symbols when needed. Um, sim op debug, that's the sim noisy that we have. That's the thing that's writing in verbals. But it's missing one more option. The option that is missing is sim op put a plus. Plus means you're going to add this option and you want to put 0x40. What is 0x40? Well, this is hexadecimal 40, which is actually an option called load anything, which is this one right here. Okay, so where did I get the uh, plus 40? Well, basically, uh, that is what Microsoft has documented for the symbol options. I will put a link to this uh, page in the description below. But basically what we have done is uh, we've added the option sim opt load anything. Um, you can add and remove as many options as you want, but this is the uh, most important one for forcing a load, which is uh, sim opt load anything. Okay, let me switch back to WinDebug. Now, a bit of a warning. If you put this option on and it is disabled by default, if you turn it on, what will happen is WinDebug will no longer check that GUID. So if you have a symbol that truly doesn't match, but the name is the same as the executable, that's going to actually corrupt your debugging. So use this option with a lot of caution and make sure you definitely have the same symbol and the only problem is because the GUID was wrong. 
then use this option. Okay, so let's give it a try. So now that I've switched the load anything on, what I can do is I can do a dot reload. This forces all the symbols to reload. Then if I do a K, it's going to be different. Now what's going to happen is WinDebug is going to find the symbol on disk. It knows that it's unmatched, but what it's going to do is it's, it's just going to load it anyway because I told it load anything. Let's inspect the um, binary. So LMVM, then I'm going to put the name of the uh, binary. And we can see that private symbols have loaded. Uh, that is exactly the private symbols which I compiled twice. And by putting load anything, uh, it has loaded. I can actually type K and there we are. It has loaded the actual symbol. Um, these are all just test functions that I wrote just to prove that this can be done. And it has even found the uh, source code line. If I put the source code on my machine, it will actually open up the source code and it will work. But again, caution, by turning on this option, you are disabling WinDebug's capability of checking the GUID. Only do it if you know you got it right. Anyway, uh, let me just switch back to full screen. So, um, this handy trick um, has an actual use case why you'd want to do this. Sometimes, you have an application, you have the symbols, and the symbols get lost. Now you don't have symbols anymore. If you get a memory dump, what are you going to do? So you might want to recompile the source code, go to source control, maybe go to git, get the source code again, compile the executable again, you'll get the PDB from that build, but it won't match the memory dump. That's why this option exists. It's only for that kind of a scenario where you happen to compile the source a second time, but you know you have compiled exactly the same source. Now, the core reason why the GUID is checked is because every compilation of Visual Studio has no guarantee that the addresses are the same. Basically, if you compile in Visual Studio and they just say there are three functions, the order in which the functions are written to disk may not be the same. Hence, the GUI check. However, if you have no choice, if you have lost the symbols, this might be your only way to get it to match. I have used uh, this trick more than once. I, I've used it a number of times uh, when truly I could not find the symbol and there was no way to get it. So, might as well just set WinDebug to load anything and recompile the source code. Give it a go if you are trapped. Um, if the if it looks like WinDebug loaded the symbol and everything looks corrupted, then probably that's not the right symbol. Just uh, set WinDebug back to normal and try again. Setting WinDebug back to normal is basically just doing sim op but with a minus to just remove the option. So minus uh, hex 40 uh, removes the option and WinDebug will be back to normal. This trick has saved me a couple of times. So just wanted to share with, with you guys how to force get WinDebug to force loading symbols. Anyway, a gentle reminder to subscribe. Uh, hit that bell icon and give me a like if you if you like the content. And definitely give me a comment in the description below. Um, just let me know what kind of videos uh, you want to see, uh, what kind of problems you have, and I'll try to make a video on it. Um, I made this video because I, I kind of forgot in my previous video about loading symbols that you can actually force WinDebug. So I just thought I'll just add on to that and show a, ver a very short video on how to force WinDebug. Uh, it might be useful for you. I don't recommend doing this all the time, but if you have no choice, um, definitely just force WinDebug. Um, anyway, video's long enough. Um, it's been a pleasure presenting uh, this information. I'm High Voice. Signing out.